Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I am Archbishop Timothy Broglio, the Archbishop for the Military Services of the United States of America. The Archdiocese entrusted to my pastoral care spans the globe and serves approximately 1.8 million people. They are your brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, Catholic men and women on active duty in all five branches of the United States Armed Forces and their families, patients in any of the 153 medical centers of the Department of Veterans Affairs across this country, or Catholics serving the federal government outside of our national boundaries. The Archdiocese tries to meet the same pastoral needs of the faithful that your home diocese does, but distances, the deployments and disruptions of the longest war in our history, a severe shortage of priests to serve as military chaplains, and costs pose a challenge to many pastoral projects. For example, to offer ongoing formation to catechists or to explain the archdiocesan-wide catechetical program for the Navy installations in San Diego, someone has to travel from Washington to San Diego. The Marriage Tribunal makes use of judges from various places in the country. The Archdiocese supports a sacramental records department that houses over three million records for sacraments celebrated on military installations since 1918. Year in and year out, the department processes more than 8,000 incoming records for new baptisms, confirmations, marriages, and professions of faith. And it issues more than 6,000 certificates requested by the faithful. My four auxiliary bishops and I spend more than 220 days of the year on the road to visit the Catholic communities spread throughout the world. There we provide pastoral care to the men and women in uniform and their families, patients at the VA hospitals, as well as to the chaplains and priests who serve them. We administer confirmation and celebrate Mass with the community. Where and when possible, we also visit with those in command. However, we still try to contribute to the work of the Bishop's Conference, where, for example, I serve in one way or another on three committees or subcommittees. The Archdiocese is responsible for the endorsement of priests who will serve in the military or at the VA or as contractors where no uniformed military priest is available. The priests come from archdioceses and dioceses such as yours, as well as from religious orders. There is a long tradition of generous ministry, but the number of priests in this ministry has been reduced by advanced age and an unwavering mandatory military retirement policy. At the General Assembly of the Bishops' Conference in Baltimore last fall, I urged my brother bishops to send more priests to relieve the shortage of those serving our military. I explained that the situation is desperate. While 25% of the U.S. Armed Forces are Catholic, Catholic priests make up only 8% of the chaplain corps, and their ranks, spread thin around the world, continue to dwindle. For example, this year the Army, heretofore stable in the number of priests in uniform, stands to lose at least 11 of its 100 or so priests on active duty to retirement and separation for medical reasons. Similar reductions are expected in the Air Force and the Navy, which serves Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. The numbers mean that it will be almost impossible to ensure that men and women, even in deployed locations and on aircraft carriers, will have access to a Catholic priest unless more priests are forthcoming. There is good news, however. In recent years, anywhere from 6 to 10% of priestly ordinations in the U.S. are men who have served in the military, 
and upwards of 20% have come from military families. To foster vocations from that source and from elsewhere, the Archdiocese for the Military Services employs a full-time vocations director, working with dioceses and religious communities around the country to help young men discern God's call to serve as priests. At the beginning of this year, 27 prospective priest chaplains were enrolled in the co-sponsored seminarian program. This program envisions that a seminarian studying for a diocese in the U.S. will also be co-sponsored by the AMS, which assumes one half of the formation costs. Three years after his ordination, the priest will begin ministry in the branch of the armed forces that he has chosen. The Archdiocese also continues to sponsor discernment retreats for young men, expressing an interest in entering seminary to become chaplains. And last year, we embarked on a new initiative called For God and Country to acquaint small groups of priests already ordained and engaged in pastoral service to other dioceses about the ministry of chaplains and some of the possibilities that are available. The first retreat was very successful, and I thank those bishops who released five of the ten participants for ministry in the military. These initiatives and programs, while costly, represent the best hope for the future of the chaplaincy, where many priests are quickly approaching the mandatory retirement age. The chaplain candidates are truly fine men, and I will be happy to see them on active duty someday. In just the past few years, 21 co-sponsored seminarians have been ordained priests, and many more are on track for priestly ordination in years to come. You have already guessed why I am telling you about this global ministry. Unlike a territorial diocese, I cannot require a percentage of the collections taken up on military installations or at the VA. There is no government funding for the ministry of the AMS. Every year, I must find more than $7 million to cover the annual budget of the Archdiocese, and an additional $2.9 million will be needed just over the next five years alone to fund the now thriving co-sponsored seminarian program. The cuts in the military budget have strapped the chapel community's ability to cover some of their costs. That means there are fewer resources for programs and personnel. Therefore, I am grateful to my brother bishops who have authorized a national collection every three years to meet the needs of the pastoral care of 1.8 million people who are from and will return to your parishes. It represents a sure path to greater financial stability for this portion of the vineyard, a bridge for uninterrupted pastoral service to those who serve. Not long before this year of mercy commenced at the direction of Pope Francis, the Holy Father told military ordinaries gathered in Rome from around the world that the role of the military chaplain is to accompany and support those in need on their journey, to be a comforting and brotherly presence for them all, to dedicate themselves, even at the risk of their own lives, to ensuring that the faithful serving in defense of your country might not be deprived of the spiritual food they need to survive. Today, I humbly beg you to help provide that spiritual food. Help me minister to those who protect this great nation of ours and defend to their last breath the freedoms we hold dear. Please make a financial gift to this year's national collection. You will find flyers and additional information in your parish bulletin. I thank you in advance for your consideration and your generosity. 
in invoking abundant blessings upon you, I ask you to assist me in assuring that those who defend our religious freedom do not have to sacrifice theirs.